Archimedes lived in Greece in the years 287 to 212 BC. He didn't have computers or calculators, he didn't have calculus, he didn't even have decimals with the number zero, but he was able to calculate an estimate for pi that is 99.99% accurate. This was a mathematical feat that would not be surpassed for another 400 years until Ptolemy, also of Greece, reach an even more accurate calculation. So how did Archimedes do it? Let's say that we have a line with a length of 0.5. We rotate that line to transcribe a circle. We know that the circle has a circumference of 2 times its radius times pi. In this case, that means the circle has a perimeter that is of length pi. We don't know what the value of pi is, but whatever it is, it is the circumference of the circle. Our problem is that we are stuck in a circular loop of needing pi to find a circumference and needing the circumference to find pi. We can break out of that loop by approximating the circle with something that we do know the perimeter of. Let's start with a square. We draw a square on the outside of the circle. We know that the length of each side is 1, so the entire perimeter is 4. Since the square is outside of the circle, the perimeter of the square is bigger than the perimeter of the circle. So the perimeter of the circle, aka pi, must be less than 4. Now, let's inscribe a second square inside of the circle. We can cut that square into triangles that each have sides of length 0.5. That means, by using Pythagorean theorem, the edges of the inner square have a length of square root of 0.5, so the total perimeter is 4 times the square root of 0.5, or approximately 2.828. So we now have an upper and a lower bound for pi. This isn't a great approximation, but we can do better if we don't use squares. Let's switch to using hexagons with six sides, which is actually what Archimedes used as his starting point. For the inner hexagon, we again divide it into triangles. These are equilateral triangles. So since one side has a length of 0.5, then all the sides are 0.5. This results in an inner perimeter of 3.0. For the outer hexagon, we also have equilateral triangles, but here we know the triangle's height rather than its edge length, so we split the triangle in half. This results in a 30-60-90 triangle, which has special properties that Archimedes would have known. Each of the six perimeter edges is 1 divided by the square root of 3, for a total length of 3.464. We still don't know exactly what the value of pi is, but we have it trapped between these two perimeters and we have a way of narrowing the gap. Now we could just keep increasing the number of sides to get a more and more accurate answer for pi. The problem is that we don't know how to calculate the perimeter for an arbitrary number of sides without using information Archimedes didn't have, such as the value of pi itself. So what did he do? What he did was use trigonometry to figure out the formula for inner and outer shapes when he doubled the number of sides. So he started with a six-sided approximation and then used these equations to get the perimeters for 12-sided shapes. He then went from 12 to 24 sides to 48 and finally 96 sides. This is where Archimedes stopped because his estimate was good enough for everything he needed it for and bear in mind that he was doing all this by hand with fractions. His final proof was that pi is greater than 3 plus 10 divided by 71, but less than 3 plus 10 divided by 70. We get a slightly different answer because Archimedes approximated his square roots, which we didn't have to do.